So if you wake up one morning and it's a particularly beautiful day, you'll know we made it. All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Underrated Podcast. Uh, this podcast is where we talk about underrated films or films that just re- went right under the radar. And today we're going to be talking about Sunshine, Danny Boyle film from 2007, uh, starring Killian Murphy, Rose, Rose Byrne, I forgot her name. Um, oh my God. Totally. Benedict Wong. <laughs> Benedict Wong. I, I was like trying Chris. to remind myself, like, you got this. Chris <laughs> Evans, there we go. Let All me, right, let me go. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're in it. We'll talk about mm-hmm. them in a bit. Uh, we are the Undercast Company. Um, we're your hosts. I'm Alan. And with us today is uh, Derek McDuff. Hey. And Sergio and Ariel Ortiz. Hello. Uh, and yeah, so pretty much uh, Sunshine. Pr- real quick, what the movie's about. Movie's about. Uh, it takes place in the year 2057, 2054, something around there. Uh, the sun's pretty much dying, so Earth sends a team of astronauts and scientists to go fix the sun, essentially, to drop a bomb in there and to reignite it with the new sun to pretty much save us. But yeah, I actually, this was my pick. I had never seen it before, so I kind of wanted to just pick one that was like blind to me as well. And <clears throat> I remember I've, I've had this on my list to watch since it ever came out and finally got around to watching it. But I want to hear what you guys think about it first. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, you want to go, Ariel? All right. No, you go ahead. Go. You go ahead. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to mention, yeah, Um. so you did mention a couple of the people in this movie, but um. yeah, this is a really big ensemble cast. Um. Other than, you know, like Chris Evans and Killian Murphy, there's also Michelle Yao, um, Cliff Curtis, Hiroki Sandow, who we were kind of talking about before we started recording, is one of my favorite um, lesser known character actors um so and this is like you on the surface like you if you just see the posters you might think it's kind of like the killian murphy movie but it is really an ensemble film if anything cliff or um killian murphy is maybe kind of the last girl the quote-unquote last girl if like you're mm-hmm. using kind of horror final girl. slasher yeah slasher movie tropes which while this i wouldn't say is a slasher movie um it does one of my favorite things which is um, something I talked about when we talked about um, As Above, So Below, which is it is a kind of like a thriller space, like science fiction movie that borrows from other genres, specifically in this case, kind of the slasher film, particularly in the second half, and especially in the third act. It does kind of like take elements from these other films. But yeah, this is this is one of my favorite movies when, Alan, you said you were thinking about doing something you'd never seen before and you threw out Sunshine. I was like, oh, that's a great idea. Like, if you want to do that, like I was all on board. Um, this is a movie I didn't see until kind of recently. Like, I think I saw it within the last year, but it was a movie that was always um, on my radar because I had a shout out to another podcast that I really love. Um, it's a uh, uh, podcast, The Weekly Planet, the host of that. Um, he always talks about how Sunshine is his favorite movie. And so I was like, OK, well, I got to see this. Danny Boyle is, a, is a, I think, a decent director. But I think what really makes this film stand out is that it's written by Alex Garland who is somebody that we have discussed on this podcast before. This was um, a movie that he wrote, and he is a really great science fiction writer. Um, he This is before he made his directorial debut, but he also wrote Dread, which was one of our first podcasts that we talked about. He's written, you know, um, like um, a bunch of other great science fiction shit, like Annihilation. Ex Machina, my dude. Ex Machina. Oh, my, yeah. Like, so, <laughs> like, honestly, this is, this is I think a great kind of genre bending film. And it is kind of the best way I can describe it is it's kind of born out. It's, I feel like there's this kind of crop of directors who grew up on 2001, a space odyssey and kind of are like, we, they want to do their own kind of take on it. Mm. It's in the same vein as like Chris Nolan's interstellar or, um, you know, Steven Soderbergh's Solaris, which is a remake of a French film that was also influenced by 2001. Um, and all these films pretty much have kind of like a hard turn in the third act where it's kind of like, it is kind of like the, all these films are hard science fiction, but they're going towards this kind of like unknowable thing. Like 
you know, in 2001, it's like the, like, you know, what, whatever's on Jupiter and the monolith and then becomes like a weird trippy thing after it's about robots killing people in interstellar, they go to the Tesseract and it becomes like about love and stuff. And this one, it's like fucking horror in this one. It's like, okay, what is this sun? And what I think it does, that's really interesting. It does a lot of interesting things, but like in most kind of like movies where there's like something unknowable and like creepy and like, like this kind of like almost like godlike demon like like what is it and it's like represented by darkness where in this film it's represented by light and like it's like this literal like source of light and life in the world is the sun but it does have this kind of like it's like drawing it's like giving people like madness and you see cliff curtis's mm-hmm. character is kind of like gets drawn into that and it's kind of hinting at like what happens to mark strong like what happened to mark strong which you'll see later in the movie and how Cliff Curtis is like, you can kind of see him like he has that scene in the beginning where he's like kind of just like looking at it. And he's like putting the brightness up and throughout the film, he's kind of like his he's getting like sunburned. And he's picking away his skin and stuff like that. And the film kind of like slowly starts to show you this deterioration. Um, and it's got all these really big, heady sci fi themes and references to mythology with obvious like Icarus flying too close to the sun and the ships are called Icarus and blah, blah, blah. But what I think really, really makes this film is like I was saying, it is a great ensemble and it is just like you see these characters interacting and like how people get along in this like insanely stressful environment. And I think what really makes it work is like Chris Evans is a character who is, you wouldn't maybe think of as the antagonist in another mm-hmm. film, but he's not the, really the antagonist in this. He's because mm-hmm. he is like the guy who's directly opposed to the protagonist, the, you know, the, you know, if there is a main character, it's Killian Murphy's um, character, but he he's right. He's right about Chris Evans is right about everything he says, and he's kind of like uh, like an asshole about it. But he's just like passionate. He's just like, yeah, we need to save the world. Like our lives don't matter. The lives of this place, the, like we just have a job to get done. And even though he like is like really pissed off at him the whole time, there's that scene where they're like trying to get back on the ship, and he's like, no, it has to. We have to put the suit on Killian Murphy because he's the physicist. Like he's, he's always about the bottom line. He's like, this is what has to happen. This is what's going to give us the greatest chance of survival. We can't go out and like go to this bomb. And it, that whole, one of my favorite scenes is the scene where they're like discussing what to do and the weighing the risks and stuff like that. If they should go find the Icarus one. And it's, it's, I just love movies that are, have like these big heady sci-fi concepts and look beautiful and have amazing music, but are really about people. And that's what I think this movie does really well. And I'm, I'm probably talk about it more later, but I've been monopolizing the conversation. Let me, I want to hear what you guys have to say. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I, I would like to go that, that I feel like it, I, I, exactly what Derek is saying is that while this is a, for me, while this is a sci-fi movie, it's to me is a bit more of a basis on psychology, psych, you know, like psychology and like the, and it's it very much humanizes like what would it would happen to people like if they were um sent on this kind of mission like i mean i i know that there's like a history of like astronauts and like kind of getting this fatigue and that's that's been very much a a a theme in a lot of by horror movies of just like you know somebody um snapping because in reality that is definitely a possibility even from like somebody who has trained you know for years to prevent that you know everybody has their breaking point so for me like while uh, i felt like all of this could kind of like yeah it's in the future it's futuristic and and um all that but i feel like in actuality like there was like no mythicism to it which i really enjoyed and it was definitely a different take on like like things of like um 2001 space odyssey and interstellar where those lean more into like the sci-fi of it uh where you know like with with 20 2001 um with the computer you, you know uh going haywire and you think that at, at one point in this movie that the computer does go haywire when it doesn't allow them to um it doesn't allow them to override you know and switch to manual when at, at that is like what it was programmed for and it is just following program and and then also with you know, I, i've never seen interstellar but, but um oh 
Ooh, that's like, interesting. Oh, I, I watch yeah. it like every other month. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely for me, it felt like a lot more of a humanized story. And yeah, there was these horror elements, but it spanned out of like a character where, you know, with um, Mark Strong's character where it's it's a it's, it was a possibility of that happening. And like, I feel like the, while like, the shots of of that whole element were like shot in a way where it was kind of horrific. I think it 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 played more of like in reality these aren't like this isn't really he isn't really like shiny and all that. It's just because they're like low in oxygen. They're kind of like have these elements of of seeing like kind of things. I do believe that he was really burned and yeah, like playing off of of what happened to the doctor. Like he was going that kind of showed that he was going in that direction. So I did enjoy, like, at the beginning of the movie, all these, like, misdirections of what would be kind of, like, the final problem of, of you know, their journey. But, yeah, I did actually really enjoy it. And even though, like, it, at the end, I kind of, like, lost track of, like, because it moved kind of fast. That was, that was my only gripe. But in the end, it, it actually told, like, a really unique story to to – this kind of theme that we've seen kind of often. Yeah, can I, I just want to say one thing real quick. Is, mm-hmm. And that's one thing I do that you brought up that I think that I do really appreciate is that compared to 2001, which, you know, obviously this is really influenced by the characters in 2001 are basically just cardboard cutouts. Like if you told me name a, a character mm-hmm. trait of David Bowman, the main character, of that movie, I couldn't tell you one thing. Like he's just a few. Mm-hmm. Whereas in this film, you know, everybody even like the minor characters have like they, they feel like real people very like even oh, yeah. Shelly Owl is like when yeah. she sees that leaf plant and she's like even though they're about to die there's no way they're mm-hmm. ever gonna get home she's still so moved by this and they, yeah. they do really care about the characters in this movie in a way yeah. that um, and especially uh, yeah and especially like uh, once again like showing that Chris Evans can definitely play a very complex character like if you yeah. if you were even <laughs> If you truthfully just know him from like Marvel, definitely watch this and and Knives Out because those characters have have definitely been mm-hmm. like my most favorite characters in um, recent cinema that I've seen because they like for Chris Evans I didn't know where he landed like and it it was like every moment like like the the brother could could um, vouch for me I was like. Is he doing this for like a nefarious reason, or is he doing this because he does yeah. really care? And I, and I always like, do. Yes, yeah. and then he 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 gives his life at the end. Like he he's like yeah, yeah. He, he dies for his convictions. Like he you know and that was incredible foreshadowing too at the be- at the beginning with him mm-hmm. accidentally like freezing his hand. Yeah, that was that was some oh, good Chekhov's gun shit right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't see that. That's I, good. I caught that. I caught that watching it this time. I was like, oh shit. Okay, all right. They're giving us a little mm-hmm. bit of info here. Um, yeah, I'm wondering a, if there's any more foreshadowing, like now going. There back. was one other thing I caught that like was really kind of almost really depressing was when um uh, Ben after Benedict Wong had like reset the things and they're like okay good they think they got it fixed for a second and Chris Evans like pats mm-hmm. him or somebody pats him on the back and says all right man we fixed it I'll don't kill, your kill stuff. yourself <laughs> yep uh, <laughs> oh, oh shit yeah, right. shit <laughs> yeah Great, there's a lot of clever I'm like Apple. like how there's like. Like the 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 flashes, like the pictures they see when they go into the, oh, the, so yeah. that it's creepy. Yeah. freaked me out. No, like when it first mm-hmm. flashed, I was like, "What was that? So, what was that? Like, <laughs> what was that? Like, because it was so out of like nowhere. Like it had mm-hmm. at, up until that point, like it hadn't really done like anything kind of like horror kind of like elements to it. Where mm-hmm. is that? I'm like, oh my gosh, everything's it's now it's a horror movie. Now it's once horror they movie. get to the ship, about the second half, kind of becomes mm-hmm. a. Like, it's kind of one of those movies that takes a turn. It's a very genre-shifting movie. So my experience watching it start off with the movie, it's like, first act, all right, this is, um, we're in a space adventure. We're on a mission. We got to do this. We're a crew, and some of us are going to die. There might be casualties. There's going to be bumps that we need to get over, but we got to complete this mission. All right, let's do it. And then even the part where the captain and... Robert Kappa, uh, that's an interesting choice. Kappa, how they yeah. to, mm-hmm. Chose to name him after a famous photographer. But uh, they go into the sh- um, outside of the ship, and then all of a sudden that's when 
their manual control gets taken away from them and then the the course starts changing and they're about to die the captain's about to give his life they're playing some music where i'm like all right i've heard this from like a coca-cola commercial or something <laughs> he's like yeah they yeah. use that it's, that's from this movie but they use it on a lot of trailers I knew, it is so this is where it originated this is where it, I, it's such a good score and like it kind of took me out a little because i was like oh i've heard this song a million times but this i've is, heard this i was from. like it's from this movie. So i remember it's such a good super score. bowl commercial or it's like <laughs> wiser is teaming up to bring water <laughs> to farmers across the country <laughs> it's like this is it i heard that music it was like oh okay but overlooking that i i, I was really into the the feel of it and the, the I guess genre of the movie at the time, and then they eventually started. It was it was interesting to see the characters and the story move along because it was like revealing information after the other, and it's like okay, we have this, and then we have this piece of information. Shit, we gotta go to Icarus One. So then they go to Icarus One, and then when they go into the the ship, it's dark and abandoned and dusty, and then the first flash of the the family or, or of like the, yeah, like the faces yeah yeah and then like it starts doing i was like this is an interesting directorial choice and then about yeah that halfway point through the second half i'd say like ne- closer to the end of the uh the second act was um when it started to make that change into more of a, a more scary and as soon as mark strong i think for me at the point where they make it to the when the airlock breaks off and then they get back onto the ship and then Harvey dies, right? His name is mm-hmm. Harvey. Harvey. Yeah. The yeah. second yeah, that, command guy who sucks. Yeah, he sucked. Even Chris Evans was willing to <laughs> throw his life away. And Harvey's like, I'm the captain. That was interesting you brought that up, Derek, about car- like the characters not being cardboard cutouts and like you could actually name them. I was like, oh, yeah, I can name the guy, the <laughs> asshole second in command who got, <laughs> you know, who missed yeah. the target and he died in space. This is Harvey. I remember him. But then at the point where it's revealed to Kappa that there's not going to be enough oxygen. You're all going to die in hours. And he's like, there's only four of us. What do you mean? And, and Icarus computer's like, no, there's five. Who's the fifth crew member? And like, oh, shit. At that point, for me, that's where like the big change happened because mm-hmm. that's when it turned into a borderline slasher. And it's just Mark Strong, the serial killer, the, you know, the Mike Myers of space. Or he's more of like, the, I don't know what the hell he is. But he's the slasher in space. And well, he's Mike Myers is the Mike Myers in space. No, Jason is the Jason. Jason, in space. Yeah, Jason, Jason, is Jason that. X. <laughs> so good. <laughs> but yeah, that, at that point for me, I was like, okay, this is different. This is not, I mean, I really don't know what to make of that isolated part of the movie where it just kind of turns into a slasher in space because for me, it was. A little bit too i want to say easy i know they did different with it and also just the edit some of the editing too i was like fuck yeah okay but then at, anytime at the, they would show mark strong like and it was just like you, yeah it was, yeah you it was, wouldn't even have known it was, it was mark got strong. Crazy, yeah. crazy. Yeah. i didn't know it was him you yeah. looked into yeah. the sun yeah. this movie at that point was doing some pretty genius things like like with that other guy at the beginning who was looking into the sun and then he's the one who sees Mark's, the video that what was his name what's mark uh, pin pin it's pin, like p- pin backer pin yeah. he's the one that watches the video and i feel like that's the moment where he goes like okay this is what might happen to me i gotta go find mm. my i gotta go make myself right and not do what this guy does i was like that's awesome yeah then Strong on the ship turns into a killer. Near the mm-hmm. end, when pretty much everybody's dead except for Kappa and the other Cassie. girl, Cassie, then mm-hmm. they make it like that's where, yeah, I also started to get confused because I was like, oh, well, shit, I was where's like, where, Cassie? Yeah, because we lost track. Uh, I was like, where's like, Cassie we lost track and where's uh, yeah, and Pinbacker? Pinbacker yeah. and, then, and then he got into the suit and made it to the payload, uh, the bomb that they're sending into the sun. And they went in. I was like, what the fuck is this going on? And I guess I just had trouble keeping up with it too. But also, I was just, it was just confusing. 
Then they got onto the payload. I was like, oh, they're on the, the bomb. And both Cassie and Mark Strong are there. And then the bomb goes off, and that's where it starts getting really trippy. It's like, well, okay, this I is. I think that <laughs> literally is like physics. I want to, I know, happens. yeah, this is where it gets yeah. like kind of interstellar. Yeah. Sada seating where he's like going through time and shit. And well, like, yeah, but I mean, like, like I think it's like the moment where he kind of like comes close to the sun is kind of like I was like, you did like, it. It's the like, you made it. Then well, this is like, like the where the physics of like the the solar bomb essentially is energy, and then the yeah, solar that, I was like, you congratulations, you beat the game. That was yeah. the you beat the game moment. Yeah. And, but then the bomb went off, everyone died, and then I thought that was a cool touch that that little last scene. Whether yeah. it's sea and it's covered in snow, mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh shit!" I was like, "Is there a train, is... train going on down there with another Chris Evans?" The, yeah, this is with another Chris Evans. <laughs> oh, that's. I mean, I don't. Yeah, like I, 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 I had a, you know, with Benedict Wong, like that first scene, especially with hit with Chris Evans looking all rugged and stuff with long, long that I'm like, are we just having like you know a, a snow piercer like before <laughs> snow piercer? But, <laughs> but no, it, it's like I said before. It, it's definitely a really good thesis on on human mentality and and in terms know, of everyone else, the, but Mark Strong really. For, well, I think for Mark me, Strong. It's just I think it's a, yeah, like like me. you said, like a um, a doctor um, was going in that direction. Yeah, already. but that was a, that's yeah. what kind of made me upset about Mark's. That that's why Mark Strong for me kind of was. For me, he was the least favorite. He was my least favorite part of the movie for me, just because of how easy he was, simple he was compared to the rest of the cast. He mm-hmm. just, he's like, I looked into the sun too long and I spoke to God and now I'm crazy. I'm going to stop you guys. Like, okay. It's like, uh, have, you ever, have you guys ever seen Pi? Yeah. I, uh, Dur- the I think Dur- you Dur- talked Oscar about movie? this movie before. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the guy, the main guy, he, he thinks that, like, if you, if you figure out, like, a math equation you can pretty much control everything in the world and like every 10 minutes it's just like when i was a kid i used to look directly into the sun and then my mom would say that was a bad thing and then like, <laughs> he just says it all the time and i'm like all right dude i get it so when i heard like mark Strong saying well he's like, trying oh. to <laughs> <laughs> i guess i'm watching pie he's trying to get <laughs> you gotta open up that penile gland you know you gotta stare into the yeah. sun <laughs> free yourself of that fluoride toothpaste so <laughs> And to plug my uh, one of our other podcasts, um, an upcoming episode of, of, of um, You've Never Seen is Train Spotting, and mm-hmm. that's another Danny Boyle movie. And in that one, we talk about another Aronofsky movie. <laughs> yeah, this is just going around in circle. Is it another? Yeah. It's, no, it's um, it's Requiem, Requiem for a Dream, which is another oh, movie. Yeah, shield, and and shield, like a <laughs> they always, oh, wait, they also, so, that's another movie where they use this, the music as trailers all the time. Oh, hell yeah. The, the theme for Requiem is uh, no, no. everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no. Wait, are you guys going to do an episode on that? Or you guys are like. Yeah, we already recorded it. It's oh, no, a I'm saying like, a, or on, on Requiem. Spotting. No, I'm no. Uh, Requiem. Maybe later on. Maybe yeah. later on. But that's what, maybe, okay, yeah. one, thing, <laughs> one thing also that I wanted to talk about that I really liked about this movie, mm-hmm. speaking of like the, the, the shield and. Everything. Oh, I yeah. liked how it felt grounded uh-huh, compared to, I, you know, it was yeah. set in how many years in the future, but even all of like the the parts where they kind of took liberties, for example, the the Earth Room, that was like, oh, that's pretty, well, that's pretty it, interesting. It wasn't even, I mean, yeah, it, it was even VR. It yeah, was, no, or, yeah. Or, 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 you know, and, like the hollow And the scenes it just... where it was somebody standing in it, I was like, okay, they're in the green screen room. But then the, the parts where they show outside of it and how it looks... And how it works i'm like this is great and then the way that they explain the coolant and the way that they explain the ai and the and the um, annual overrides of everything and just the way that everything worked and of course the people it had a lot to do with the characters themselves they felt really grounded and real except for mark strong but the crew of Icarus 2 were and, they, yeah. they had great chemistry mm-hmm. together and and de- definitely Icarus itself looks like a spaceship. Yeah, that, I was going to say, yeah. Created, like, the way that, know, it, like, um, the, how the, the systems it the, work. Um, the one that did just pass by, pass by Mercury. Mercury. Or, mm-hmm. Yeah, it has kind of like a shield looking like that, too. Mm-hmm. So they yeah. probably got it from that because that's like decades old. 
Yeah, the way that the, the breakaway action and the phases, it, it, it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's based off of off of reality. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, it's, I, it's hard sci-fi. It's, it's, and like, I like how the, the, yeah. the sun's shield is also like a solar panel, and that's how the ship is powered. There's a lot of really cool, interesting mm-hmm. shit like it in the movie like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's something that I definitely appreciated about this movie. It didn't really take me too, out of it that much in that sense, and then it left the rest of it to like, and blow you away and and take like kind of lift you off the ground of this groundedness that they've set up for themselves. So that was really cool to see. It's good to see a movie that, especially a sci-fi movie, that takes those extra liberties. Where it's not it's not all it's where it makes sense scientifically, but also tactic tactically, I guess, like plot yeah. wise, it doesn't mm-hmm. make it. It's not just like oh, this is this and this is this. science. Just listen to the science mumbo jumbo. I feel like that's Alex Garland's like really like that's where he's like writing is very talented because Mm -hmm. Ex Machina is all that it's like just it it doesn't really like cater to the audience in the the sense of like it doesn't make you feel dumb like they're saying a lot of like techno mumbo jumbo and stuff but it's all like believable science where they're talking about like the robots and the the software and all that stuff like like and even when they're just sitting talking to each other about like what do you think about her like this? What about like that? Like, that's what I loved about this movie too, where they're like, Oh, we're going to slingshot over here. And we're going to like when Benedict Wong's character is like, Oh, you know, I, I did the calculations and I did the feel like he, he took into account like everything except one thing, but it, like small snippets of stuff like that. I love where he, there, it's like, it just sounds like, yeah, that totally makes sense. And you kind of hear a lot of that yeah. too in interstellar as well. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah. Oh, just if you were going to finish up, Really gotta rewatch it. Like this movie, we want to go back to rewatch Interstellar. I see. They want to go back into the bookshelf. You know? <laughs> Your move. Well, I mean, Ariel, if, since you haven't seen it, you should do it. We should do an episode of like you haven't seen. Wink, yeah. Wink, yeah. You know, hey, that's yeah. It's just. It's just. <laughs> I know it's such a daunting of a movie. It's like I. I feel like it's kind of like. Mr. Nolan's like Titanic where it's super long and I just been I don't know putting it off I know well, I should it, watch it and stuff but I mean I do I yeah <laughs> it, it it like like it's got the same thing as this movie where a lot like people are really divided on the ending of it like I know a lot of people who really like do n- are like yeah it was good until the end when they did you know this and that's <laughs> I've heard that the same um, criticism mm-hmm. about like, this I movie. know that and people that might be split. like uh, super yeah. space. And I like the ending of both I, of them. Yeah, thank you. But, yeah, I think that is that 2001 influence coming through. Where 2000. That's what I was gonna say. Parts. It's very yeah. 2001 <laughs> influence, especially when that ending. Because with both of these yeah. other movies set in space, it's that ending that really like breaks breaks into that sort of theory. It's more, but with this movie, it's not as as daunting as Interstellar, where Interstellar really, you know, like, you know, it's Chris Nolan and he takes these actual legitimate uh, theories and, and quantum physics and space travel. And with this one, it's more of liberty. But it works well because watching it as an audience, especially coming out of the groundedness of, and the simplicity almost of the two acts, the very ending, it's just like, okay. That makes sense. This is what happened. They're already here. They're at the sun. They're bombing. They're you know they're gonna set off like the largest man-made bomb ever built yeah, in the it's sun. The size of Manhattan, they say. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So you know, I can believe if I was if, you know if you had me up to this point, then I'm sure I'll be okay when they beam comes face to face with the sun. <laughs> Yeah, so Alan, I'm really curious what you thought because um, this is your pick. Your first, this is your first time viewing. Um, let me let's hear it. Well, pretty much, uh, I heard the same thing you did, Derek, with this film. It was always like, well, whenever I asked anybody or like read stuff online, everybody always said the same. They're like, dude, it's so good up until the. Sl- I'm like, slasher part, and I'm kind of like, <laughs> okay. I, I mean, it that's my favorite, you know, horror genre, the slasher stuff. But I was like, really, like. Okay, I, all right, I'll get, and I, I just never got around to it. And then finally, when I watched it, I was like, "Dude, this movie's amazing." I, you guys already touched on touched upon a lot of things. But Did it come out, by the way. Yeah, what's up? Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. 
Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. a little bit older than I was expecting. Honestly, I've never heard of it either. Uh, I heard about it when it had when it had come out, but it was like limited release, I think, or it just bombed, and I just never had the chance to go see it. And like I, I remember, I was like, maybe I'll rent it one day, and da da da. But when we we're trying to decide on another episode, I was like. All right, I want to do one that I've heard over and over again how underrated it is. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to throw my hat in there and give it a try. But I loved it. I thought it was great. I mean, pretty much I agree with everything you guys were saying. Um, Chris Evans, like, stole the show for me. I thought yeah. he was, like, mm-hmm. my favorite part about the, the movie. And a great Canada. character. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, his, his character was awesome. Like, I, I kind of felt like that, too, so... I kind of played a game with myself when I was watching it because <laughs> of the slasher thing. So I was like, okay, it's going to end up being a slasher at one point. So I was like, who's going to be the, 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 the Michael yeah. or Jason Boyd in space? <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was kind of like, all right, Chris Evans, all right, he seems like an asshole. It's probably him. And then I was like, no, 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 too easy. It's probably not him. And then the guy, uh, Cliff, uh, who kept looking at the sun, I was like, it's probably going to be him. And I'm like, you know, I just kept jumping around but because like, everybody was so interesting. And then after a while, I was like, I don't want it to be anybody. I was like, I kind of just like everybody. I was like, yeah. I hope it's like <laughs> someone else. And then Mark Strong strolls in like, hey, brother, oh, I got okay. <laughs> that, you know what? Yeah. That, that opens up like a new perspective for me because I wouldn't want to see anybody else <laughs> to be slashers either. Yeah. So I'm, uh... yeah. Even, even Cassie gave out <laughs> Too, like waking up killing Mur- like being at Killian Murphy's like bedside when he wakes up from a nightmare and then saying oh yeah I have those nightmares too where we fall into the sun and stuff yeah I was like uh I feel because fall into then the that, sun that plays even more like mm-hmm. like it could a, a switch could be turned into a, in anybody you know yeah. in this kind of situation fall into yeah. the sun <laughs> <laughs> no, and then like when, when when they're talking about the airlock or whatever, they're like, we need to go this way, and then they find out they're like, oh, somebody sabotaged it, and I was like, all right, so now it's one of the two girls, you know, like Rose Burns character or the or the other one, and then I'm like, but wait a minute, what if it's somebody from the other ship? Like, I don't know, I, I made it the experience a lot more fun for myself, mm-hmm. just trying to be like, who who done it? Even though I already knew the slasher part was coming, but other than that, like, I I enjoyed it thoroughly, like. The I, I again I heard the stuff with the slasher part being complaint for me I was like I'm down with it I'm not gonna say no, but dude it's great like I, I loved it like again it's it's kind of hard to say anything else because you guys touched upon everything I'm glad everybody pretty much enjoyed it up until like I know Sergio you weren't too big on a Sinestro at the end but um <laughs> <laughs> fucking it up for everybody <laughs> but yeah definitely was, definitely loved yeah, it man fun. yeah. Well, well, something I think that you speaking about what you guys were just saying about you know how like you feel like you um, he wasn't that much of an interesting character and like what you were saying, Alan, about like you didn't want to be in it because they're all like everyone in this is so like human and unique and interesting, and then like you have like him come in who's he's all it's almost like he's kind of like not even a character he's like this husk of a human who's just like been burned out by the sun mm-hmm. and he thinks of himself as a god and like he's the way he's shot it's like not he's not even a character he's just like this crazy like. You don't even like, see his face. Yeah, because anytime they cut yeah. to him, like it becomes like this, like, like hazy. a haze. Yeah, it's like yep. hazy, and like there's this kind of like weird. And the best way I can describe it, the way he shot is, it's shot like it feel like when you hit your funny bone. Like that's what it felt like. It felt like that. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> the fun fact: the directors actually got their um, Panavisions and pointed them at the sun and seen what happened. It's not true. I just really? made that up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> for me the those shots it felt more like somebody was just like like danny boyle was like all right we gotta we, we can't he, he can't wear a mask or a hockey mask in space so we'll, how, how are we gonna make him mysterious a <laughs> hockey husk, mask like a husk <laughs> he's already a husk and shit of like stardust or whatever and yeah. they're like but how can we hide him and then somebody's like hey bro don't worry and they just got a little mirror and every time he would show up they just like shine light on the candle <laughs> lens and i guess just that, like, no, yeah. no, 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 i'll do it now yeah, oh, mysterious. Ooh, great. Unknown. All the great actors, you never see their faces. They're like non humans. They're like, yeah, you know, so, Jason's got yeah. his hockey mask. Michael Myers has like his mask, you know, like leather face. So they're the all these just kind mystery. of like faceless entities. Mm-hmm. And like Mark Strong is such a creepy good villain in like every movie. And like, so like, of course, I'm like, yeah, it's got like, I knew he was in this, 
So I kind of like was like waiting for him to show up and <sighs> just like, like I was like, okay, it's, he's probably going to be the villain because except for King's oh, he's been a bad guy in everything. Yeah. So when he showed <laughs> Even up, I was in like, the God, he's so fucking good. Yeah. Even in the damn, like, when he's in those video logs, you, when he's in the video logs and you see him normal, because that was when, like, and then, then you see the first video broadcast with him, and you're like, then, then it ends, the crew's watching, that was the last broadcast before their comms got cut, and then they get on board on the ship, and he sees the video that he recorded before he fucked everything up, and even in the video... Creep that creeped me out the most just because of how distorted it looked mm-hmm. and also just oh, yeah, the way like that... glitching. Yeah, and but they don't show too much. They don't mm-hmm. show too much and it that really creeped me out. Hey, well it's, the glitching is kind of a yeah. foreshadowing too. Mm-hmm. Because that's how it looks flare. like in real yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just like that's what, yeah. Even though the video feed is glitching out, they don't directly even film it either, or they don't directly show it. It's always like far away or behind somebody or they cut to it and then they quickly cut to something else. I was yeah. yeah, it's a little bit foreshadowing on how they perceive him when he's physically there. That's literally how they shoot him when he's there. Yeah. Yeah, I honestly think that this is like one of the great like pieces of sci-fi and it's and it's like you were saying Alan you did I just double checked to see if it what it made and it it lost money to the box office. Like it only made it had a small budget 40 million and it didn't even make that back like you know bef- like it only made Sad. 32 million it's like it's yeah it's a shame because like it's such a good movie and i think mm-hmm. it is really it should be kind of more of a landmark of like science fiction and it's a movie that is kind of just kind of known as like oh yeah it's that one you know it's a pretty solid sci-fi people are de- debate about the ending but i think it's fucking great like i would recommend this movie to anybody Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Should make a second one. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Icarus <laughs> Three. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no! It'll be called the Sunset. And they're like, "All right, oh, the, the and the sun's, sun's getting right. too we gotta hot." Turn it yeah, off. we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta turn it off. If they did it, because you know they said the whole it, you, you know, eight minutes from when we do, drop the pay, payload, you'll know. Mm-hmm. Could you imagine if like? Just because it's Danny Boyle, it, it, like if they took that literally, and you had an eight minutes of like just like not knowing like what <laughs> had happened until eight minutes, but nah, I guess that's just too meta. <laughs> just put it like eight minutes of darkness, and then like have that last final scene. <laughs> well, was it like would be pretty great? That would be, pretty yeah, but yeah. <laughs> just show the credits, and then just show like. A couple more minutes of like darkness. <laughs> oh, like, it's a movie back. made backwards. It's so the yeah. stars with the credits and they're going like uh up. <laughs> and then, oh yeah. The- it's like Memento. Yeah. Um, the movie ends really with the opening credit. That's genius. <laughs> Just call it a shine <laughs> sun. <laughs> shine sun. <laughs> good movie well, yeah Thank definitely you. man like i mean it's it's one of those like it's been on the underrated list since like 2007 mm-hmm. and it honestly does belong there it's definitely underrated definitely mm-hmm. if you get a chance i, I kind of struggled to find it i, I kind of had to go through the outskirts of the internet to find it <laughs> be like all right got it for free but <laughs> definitely if you get a chance to like stream it netflix or whatever give it a watch yeah, I ended up just buying because I was gonna rent it and I was gonna like because I just turned on like my. Yeah, fire I stick ended up buying it too. Yeah, because it was like three ninety nine to rent or four ninety nine to buy. It- so I was like, "Fuck it, I'll spend the extra dollars. <laughs> just have this great movie forever." Mm-hmm. Damn, I should have bought it, but I was kind of like away from home, so I, could- I had to watch it <laughs> somewhere else. So I was like, "All right, I guess I'll I'll try try it another way." Yeah, I think it's a it's a recommend from all of us. Mm. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's, yeah, you know, it's got its flaws, but I mean, it's m- most definitely underrated, especially, and it deserves a watch. Yeah, and, and like I said, like, like I feel like you should, like, if you take the slasher part as being more grounded than it actually looks, yeah, a, a bit more. And hey, this yeah. movie's, it's got a little bit of everything. It's, you know, uh, the, the part, while it's kind of 
sticking out of the rest of the movie. It doesn't mean it's necessarily bad or even like bad to watch. It's still good to watch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. Sometimes, except like just be careful when the pictures flash on the screen because you might like <laughs> have an accidental heart attack. Oh, real quick. <laughs> About that, so because you know, I said I had to find it somewhere online uh-huh. when that flash came out. I was like, Oh, fuck, someone messed with the film. <laughs> like, God damn it. I was like, I think someone just put a picture of themselves in it, and then I rewound it. And then I was like, Wait, let me see if it happens. What if it's like Fight Club or something, yeah, but with like the dick at the end? And then it showed him, and then I was like, Oh, okay, it's part of the movie. All right, cool, whatever. Like, I was like tripping out because one time I had, I had seen. John Wick. I had a I had to use one of those links, and my buddy sent me the link. And that was before John Wick got huge too. So I watched it, and like, it starts like, like because it had the it had the 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 movie logos and all that, or like the production company logos, and then it kind of just starts in the middle. And I was like, <laughs> you okay. yeah, I told us. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I told yeah, you guys, yeah. but I, I'm gonna give it, I'm tell the story for the listeners. And I was like, okay, so whatever. I, I guess it's one of those movies, like a memento kind of fucking weird thing. <laughs> Starts in the middle, and then it kind of progresses, and but, but it's linear enough where I'm like, okay. Uh-huh. But the whole time I was like, wasn't there like a dead dog? I was like, uh-huh. wait, wasn't there like a dead? Uh, are we supposed to be assuming this? I was like, damn, <laughs> they must really think the audience is fucking hella smart. So I'm like, okay keeps going and then you know he he fights the bad guys and the final bosses and all that and then i was like okay i could have sworn there was a dog (laughs) and then i and then i was like maybe there's a post credits and then i I wait i skipped to the post credit or the credits (laughs) the fucking beginning of the movie is at the end of the credits oh my god dude you stole junior's idea before created it, <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it and then just... and like I, I ended up watching the beginning and i'm like oh there's the dead wife oh, there's the dead dog. i was like they put it in the this... credits oh man cinematic <laughs> masterpiece yeah. Yeah. Ariel, you know what you do when you edit this for youtube is you should just like edit for the video version of this just like different like pictures of like us to like end up just like flashes <laughs> and like the, 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 i'm not that good uh... at, I, i'm not that good at yeah that. okay guys submit <laughs> In the I'm next episode of Undercast, yeah. submit your family photos. Oh. Just you, though. <laughs> Just zoom in on your family photos and then send them, send them to us. And you might have a chance to be in our next video. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah for when we talk about Batman v Superman, we'll, we'll put oh, we'll put those in. Fuck We're going to talk about oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, I cannot it. fucking wait. That's like yeah, you gotta wait for the Snyder cut. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited for that definitely. But, but yeah, oh no, they just to to finish the story real quick. I, I tell my buddy, I'm like, hey bro, and I tell him the story, and he's like, what the fuck did you watch? And I was like, well, apparently it was John Wick. Like somebody's cut. <laughs> it, I guess it was the Snyder <laughs> cut of John Wick. And then I was like, do you saw it like that? He's like, oh no, I just grabbed some random ass link and threw it at you. And I was like, oh thanks. <laughs> didn't even review it. He's like, I'm assuming it's right. Could have been like fucking malware. And he's like, Nah, bro, here you go. It's the Snyder Cut. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. All right, guys. Any last words? Any? No, nah, just see this movie. So, yeah, go watch it. Watch it. Yeah, watch it. Definitely go. Also, go listen to our other podcast. We have um, you haven't seen. And never gateway seen. episodes you've never seen. Oh, I'm sorry. I was like, it's okay. Turn around. <laughs> I always kind of go, wait, it's, it's like this or like this. Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely go check those out too. You guys have any upcoming episodes? Uh, um, my, yeah, there's. Be, yeah, go for it. Yeah, yours. Gateway episodes yeah, the next. The gateway episodes, but that by the yeah by the time this podcast will come out, because uh, I on the fifteenth of every month. Um, we do an episode, so uh, the one that me, by the time this podcast comes out, the one that me and you talked about, Alan uh, Hannibal, will be out. So go ahead and listen to me and Alan talk about Hannibal. Um, yeah. And then the um, next one for me, since it is dis- it, December and it comes out on the first of every month, the December one is going to be um, White Christmas, where I talk to Alan and Eric. About and then in January we, we're going to be releasing that train spotting one and having another discussion of com- comparing Danny Boyle and and Darren and Aronofsky movie. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a little boy, I used to stare at the the, the sun 
every single day, and then Mark Strong came out and killed me. <laughs> 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 Mark Strong came out of the sun and killed me. <laughs> he came out of the sun and killed me. He's like, I'm Sinestro, the, the Sinestro Corp Lantern. <laughs> And well, thank you so much, you guys, for listening. Uh, you know, chime in, let us know what you guys think. We want to hear what your favorite rated films are. Let us know, go on our socials and everything. And yeah, love to hear from you guys. And have a good one. Take it easy. Hi, thanks for being amazing. <laughs> See you in another life. All right, guys, thank you for sticking around. Today we're actually going to be doing an exclusive giveaway of a digital copy of John Wick. The Snyder uh, Cut one. The first person to get it, uh, I'm just going to read out the code, a 9 b 7 mfpt 6 y 7 9 So that's your code, guys. First person to claim it gets the movie. Oh, you, you got guys. the digital copy? <laughs> yeah, I got it right here. <laughs> All right, guys, whoever, whoever grabs it first gets searches. Whoever grabs it, it's out there.